What I want to talk about today is using make files and shell scripts to type less when you're doing your Eeks project. Um, and I am not an expert at this at all. It's just kind of, these are the things that I've kind of taught myself um, to prevent myself from typing as much as I do um, when I'm doing Eeks project. And I want you guys to start thinking about these things as well and think about how you can automate some of the processes that you do over and over and over again. Um, particularly when you're working on an Eeks project. So I want to st start with um, looking at this artificial bash history. Um, so this is for project uh, project one of Eeks 370. And um, so this is super contrived, but the idea is that I edit my, my file that I'm working on, compile it, run a bunch of tests. Uh, edit it some more, compile, run tests. And we have, I have this loop over and over again. And so I want to prevent running this many commands every single time I edit a file, like, especially if I'm like changing one line or something like that. Um, so how can I prevent myself from typing all of that? So the first thing is um, make files. So right now, the way, if you looked at my bash history, um, the way I've been compiling things is by typing out this long thing, um, which then gives me my assembly, which is cool, except one, it's a lot to type, and two, this is something I have done before, um, which is terrible, because then I've got that, <laughs> But this has happened to me before, like the day of projects do. And it is the worst thing in the world, especially back before I was version controlling things. So, um, yep, I got that. All right, so instead of doing that, which is, which could potentially cause problems, we're gonna make a make file. And this one is gonna be kind of trivial because I'm not, it's like one file that I'm compiling. But the idea is that um, I have, when I run make, it runs this command. Um, all of the CC flag source and target are defined above. And that means I won't make typing mistakes because I can't mistake typing um, because I'm only compiling one C file, this is kind of a trivial make file, but these become a lot more important when you have larger projects. Because um, the other thing that make files allow you to do is compile only certain parts of your project, which if you have hundreds of like C or CPP files, you don't want to you know wait for hours while it compiles, um, especially if you're making one change in one module somewhere. And so make files allow you to only compile the stuff that needs to be um, and then using a linker, make everything magically work together. Um, and then I include this make clean, which basically cleans out the the things I've made, um, which right now all it does is remove the uh, assembler target. Um, and these are pretty easy to make, and you should really be making these for all of your projects, um, because then all I have to do is run make, and now it will without me mistyping ever, will always compile my thing. Um, and make is really easy to make. And so now I've got my assembler, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I want to talk about about make files, because that's going to cover the majority of what you guys will be doing in each project, unless there's a class like 381 that will be a lot more strict about make files. What's up? And 470. And 470. I haven't taken 470 yet, but yes. Um, and, and like, when you're writing a production level uh, application, you, that's going to be expected. Um, and so yeah, big files are important. So the next thing is, if we open up the batch history again. Um, so I took care of that compile statement. Now I've got all of these testing, uh, all this testing that I do. 
and being a good tester, I've written out a series of test cases. These are my assembly files that my assembler is supposed to assemble. Um, and being a good tester, I also have a bunch of stuff that I wrote of the answers to these test cases written out by hand. I didn't actually write them out by hand, but you should um, <laughs> when you're actually doing, but when you're testing. Because if you're, I know a lot of people that will compile run a test by running their test case and then looking at the output and saying, does that look right? And that's not the way you want to test ever. Um, because that's, you're going to end up saying, yeah, that looks right, and it's not going to be right. So um, this for this uh, project, it's pretty simple because it's just an assembler. And so it's not bad to do these by hand. Um, and a lot of your programs and like uh, each project that you do, you'll be able to write these out by hand, and you should be doing that. So I've got my input and my correct output, or the output that should be created by my program. Um, and so when I'm doing this, I'm basically running my program against my test case and storing it in uh, some sort of output file over here, and then dipping it. So I have a bunch of test cases. I don't want to run this every time. And so I'm going to start using shell scripts to help me do, do these repetitive tasks over and over again. And so the simplest way to do this um, is to uh, is to simply copy over my bash history. Because really, all, all this is going to do is run through those lines one by one. And so that's the dead simple way of making your life easier through shell scripts. Um, it's not a particularly elegant way of doing it, but for a proof of concept, um, you could do this. So then, I could. my tests. And because it it's not outputting anything because all the test cases passed and there was no diff between the correct output and my output. Cool. So that's, that takes me, you know, 60-70% of the way. But um, because I submitted to the auto grader and it said I didn't catch all of their buggy test cases, I'm going to add more test cases. And I don't want to change my shell script every time I add a new test case. And so what am I going to do? Um, basically, what I want my script to do is instead of listing out all the test cases, I want it to figure out what all my test cases are. And it's pretty easy to do that, seeing as all my test cases are pretty easy to find. It's just the list of .as files in this test folder. And so I this, which is, this is actually a shell script I used in my 42 project for real, um, modified a little bit. Um, and so I'm just going to walk you through kind of what this does. And so basically what this does is it runs all my test cases. Um, ignoring this top bit for a little bit, uh, first thing it does is it makes. Um, that's pretty straightforward. And then for all of my test case files, which are determined above, um, which if I, if I just run the script, it'll do this. It'll grab all of my AS files in the test uh, folder. For, all, for each one of these, uh, you know, form an output file, form the correct output file using some string manipulation, doesn't really matter how much. Run it, and then diff it. And if there was no diff, Echo success. Um, clean up, and then make clean. So it's pretty simple, um, and it didn't take very long to write, and it simplified my life, and made things go faster. Um, everything was great. And so if I run that, I, I get something like this. 
and if for some reason there was an error in my submission, then I would see these errors, which made it really easy to, you know, build, test, and make sure everything's good, especially right before submitting, uh, running one of these is, is awesome. And yeah, so it's this is a, just like a really basic overview of kind of my workflow when I'm working on projects. Um, hopefully allowing you guys to simplify your lives while testing these projects. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Are you just just like this for the Um, I have no real reason for preferring it. Um, it started out by me actually doing something similar to copying my batch history over because I was typing the same thing over and over again. And so the simplest way to um, kind of simplify right, running a bunch of commands, the same set of like four or five commands over and over again, is to just dump it in a shell script and it kind of just builds from there. You could use other scripting languages to do this and especially if you're doing a lot more like string manipulation and stuff like that, it makes a lot more sense to use something that supports that a little nicer. Um, but for the most part, these are pretty simple, and especially because my checking in for correctness is a simple diff. Um, back, oh, bash and like shell scripts take me all the way there. Um, also, I, I didn't do it for, for this, but what you could be doing potentially um, as a next step after this is if you're version controlling with like Git or something, using something like Git hooks, which I want to start doing, I don't do it enough now, um, to make sure I run all my tests before I do any commits and stuff like that. And so basically you want to start automating these dull tasks so that you don't have to run them every time, right? So you don't forget things and so you don't make mistakes. Does anyone else have any questions? Yeah? Can we put this online somewhere? Sure, I'll do that. And I'll post them.